Hi everybody, Hawk here. The purpose of this video is to help you make good decisions when mastering your music for commercial release. I'll do this by comparing some major label EDM releases and checking out their real world peak and LUFS levels. And yeah, these levels totally fly in the face of what the streaming services recommend, generally between minus 11 and minus 14 loudness units full scale, LUFS, and peak levels of minus one decibels true peak, DBTP. Here are the songs that I'm going to use as examples. Let's check out these songs. Saturn by Dead Mouse, released in 2019 on the Mousetrap label. Obviously a pretty major EDM label. And also Not So Bad featuring Emmy, released in 2020 and on the Spinning Records label, another really big uh, EDM electronic dance music label. And a cover that I did, Sweet Dreams, released on my label quite a long time ago, back in 2016. I think it's a really good comparison because it's an okay mix, but definitely not a very aggressive mastering job. I've learned a lot in the years since I released this and I'm definitely hitting the mastering a lot more aggressively. So, so yeah, this is a really good comparison relative to the other more recent major label songs. So let's download these as WAV files and load them up into Pro Tools to check them out. Now in order for this test to work, I need to get my hands on the actual WAV masters that the label submitted for distribution. So for example, you can download WAV files from Beatport, but are they the actual WAV files that were submitted for distribution, or have they been adulterated in some way, such as converted to a compressed MP3 format and then back to WAV? Let's hope not, because that wouldn't be a true representation of how the labels were finalizing their masters. This is the WAV file that I downloaded from Beatport. Check it out. And here is the original master. Well, they sound the same, right? But next, let's zoom in and actually check out the waveforms. So we're gonna zoom way in here. If the waveforms are the same, now these are, remember, different sources. The bottom one is the original master, and the top waveform is the song that I downloaded from Beatport as a WAV file, and that's zoomed all the way in. They are exactly the same. Yeah, so there you go. That's the proof. The WAV files we can download from Beatport are indeed the actual WAV files submitted for distribution by the labels. This is actually really cool. Kudos to Beatport. All right, let's start with my cover song, Sweet Dreams, and analyze the results. Here we go. I've cleared the meters uh, for the TL Master Meter and uh, Isotopes Insight 2. Unmute the track and press play. All right, what do we have here? We have an integrated LAOFS of about minus eight. And we have a peak of about minus 0.7. And over here in our oversampled clip events, we have a peak of about plus 0 0.08. I really like the master meter, what previously was called the TL master meter because 
This shows us the peak of the original song, not the inter-sample peak events that happened during the D to A conversion, which is what this meter is showing here. So, and I did, I recall mastering this at about minus 0.6. Even with this low peak of 0.7, I still had some intersample peaking as represented here by the oversampled clip events. And I mean, my overall LUFS is pretty competitive, I think, at about minus eight LUFS. That's, that's okay. Let's move on now and take a look at the levels in the next song, which is the Spinning Records song released in 2020. Pressing play. Oh, actually, before I press play, I better clear the meters here and let's see what we get. Here we go. All right, now, obviously I had to mute that for the purposes of, you know, I don't want to get copyright flagged. So anyway, you can listen to the songs yourself uh, on Bport, right? Obviously. So let's talk about what we're seeing here. Um, it looks like the mastering engineer mastered the peak on this to minus 0.1. That's really hot, um, minus 0.1. And as a result of mastering it to minus 0.1, there was no headroom for the intersample peaking events, which means that, uh, yeah, we just maxed out with over 2,000 um, peaking events uh, during the digital to analog conversion here, as recognized by this meter. And it's also just plain old really loud in terms of the LUFS at uh, minus six uh, LUFS. It's, that's really, really hot. We can see that the true peak meter here on both Insight 2 and Master Meter agree with each other that there's intersample peaks occurring over zero during the D to A conversion all the way. I mean, that's really hot, 1.8. If you remember, my song that I mastered lower didn't have those uh, it only had like six intersample peaks. It was much, much lower. All right, uh, let's keep moving here and take a listen to this third song here. Unmute the track. This is going to be Saturn by Dead Mouse on the Mousetrap label. Let's clear the meters out here. Here we go. And again, I'm obviously going to be muting this so that I don't get a copyright flag and you can check out the song uh, on your own. I'll leave links and everything down below for all of this stuff. Let's talk about what we're seeing here. This is interesting. The LUFS is a little bit hotter, but we don't have as many of the oversampled clip events here, uh, where the other one just maxed out at 2,000. Uh, the spin and records maxed out at 2,000 almost immediately. This one, playing for that limited amount of time, is at 729 events. And however, not only is LAFS louder, the peak is louder as well. It looks like the mastering engineer actually set this to zero. The brick wall limiter was set literally to zero. So not as many oversampled clip events, but a hotter output level overall and really slamming the LUFS. And yeah, that's super, super hot. Again, just for reference, Streaming services recommend an LUFS of between minus 11 and minus 14 and peaks of minus one dBTP. For comparison, CD levels are between minus eight and minus nine LUFS and minus 0.1 dBTP. 
Now, the concept of intersample peaking is that when your mastered WAV file is converted from the digital file back to analog audio in the real world, whether it's through a streaming service on a smartphone or a CD player in somebody's home stereo system, that in the conversion process, peaks above digital zero can occur and may cause distortion in the resulting audio output. So yes, I certainly believe intersample peaking can cause distortion in your audio when it's converted to the real world out there. However, it's unlikely that the general public is going to notice this distortion. And obviously, it doesn't appear that the major labels care at all about intersample peaking, so I guess we shouldn't worry about it too much either. Though, I do think that it's worth keeping it in mind. With that said, let's take a look at how to set your mastering limiter for an optimal ceiling and LUFS levels to match your material. Okay, the first thing we need to decide on is where you want to set your master limiter's ceiling, that brick wall level above which your signal is not going to exceed. Do we want to set it at 0, minus 0.1, minus 0.3? Where do we want to set it? Remember that the higher the ceiling is set, the more the possibilities there are of intersample peaking. At zero, definitely going to be a lot of intersample peaking. But if we bring it down to say minus 0.3, not as many chances of the intersample peaking occurring. If we bring it down to minus one, definitely not very much intersample peaking is going to occur. So depending on your material, again, you know, do you want to really push those ceiling levels or do we want to bring them down a little bit, give us a little bit of headroom? I prefer to sit somewhere between 0.3, minus 0.3 and minus 0.5. I think that feels pretty good, again, dependent on the material. Since this is an EDM song, I will go all the way up to minus 0.3, give myself a little bit of headroom, but still, I think, be competitive in terms of the final peak output level. Next, I want to set my threshold to determine basically how much squash and perceived loudness I want to push up towards that ceiling. It's good to keep in mind that when you pull this all the way down here, you're going to introduce distortion into your signal by way of the limiting, the squashing. It's best to pull this down so that we can hear some of that limiting and squashing, but not enough to create the distortion coming from the original signal, coming from the mastering processors. I've often heard it explained that the distortion you're going to hear is from over squashing your master in the limiter, not so much the intersample peaking. So let's just go ahead and start up here and bring it down until we start hearing the distortion coming in, and then we'll back it up from there. And at the same time, we will look at our Insight 2 meter to find out what our LUFS is. Here we go. I just want to point out that with a threshold this low, there's so much signal crossing and being limited that we're definitely hearing some distortion starting to creep into our mastering output. So from here, I want to back it up and watch my LEOFS here. Minus six, you know, that's competitive in terms of the perceived loudness uh, with other EDM songs that we looked at previously, but I don't want to get it that loud. I think I'd like a little bit more dynamics in my master. So I will clear that and then bring this up.
I'm pretty happy with that. We're getting a lot of perceived loudness. Um, we're definitely competitive. Uh, we've set our ceiling so that uh, there's not as many chances for the intersample peaking. And, uh, you know, I might even back it off a little bit more to give it a little bit more breathing space, but um, that's definitely competitive. The other thing to think about is whether you want a true peak on the limiter. And there is definitely a sound with true peak. It's definitely tamping down on any possibilities of the intersample peaking events occurring, as many of them occurring, I should say. And again, I would say turn it on if it sounds right. If it doesn't sound right, uh, forget about it. If I want an EDM sound that is very, very bright and sharp sounding, I will probably leave it off. But if I wanted uh, a country song that had a little bit more warmth and was controlling some of those intersample peaking events, I might turn it on. Check this out. Uh, so I'll start with it off. So could you hear that? Again, it's pretty subtle. Of course, I only looked at two major label songs, and obviously the more examples, the more test samples, the better, right? Also, if there were a way to directly compare your master against multiple examples in your exact same music genre, you could feel even more confident about your final output levels, right? Gee, I wish there were something like this. Wait, there is. Check out this website by TC Electronic called Finalizer, finalizer.com. It proves my point about EDM songs, dance electro songs being really loud. If we go up to the loudest song here, number 15, and we click on it, we can see that it is called Crab Rave, and it has a loudness, a LUFS of minus 5.7, that's hotter than the songs we looked at, which ranged around minus six. Uh, it has a true peak. Um, this includes, clearly includes, uh, since it's over zero dB, the actual oversampling clip events, uh, the intersample peaking events. It's got uh, intersample peaking events, uh, true peak of 3.3 dB. And that's really, really loud. So, um, this is really loud. Uh, wow. If we were to look at another song randomly here, how about electricity? Um, not as loud and not as many true peaks. So this this is this one here is would be on the quieter side. Uh, LUFS of minus eight and um, a uh, dBTP of 0.8. So not as loud. If we scoot over here to country and we look at, let's look at a, a really hot country song here, uh, 13. So loud, but not as loud as the EDM song, minus 6.6 .6 on the LUFS and true peak, uh, DB true peak of 0.7. Again, the intersample peaking events, 0.7. And let's check out if I clear this and I come back. See, there's orchestra. Oh, look at orchestra all the way down here. Let's use a, just a, a middle-of-the-road orchestra set here. And um, an LAFS of minus 19 and a true peak of minus 3.5. So significantly quieter. Anyway, you can sign up for the Finalizer website here and load up your own songs to see how your master compares to other pop songs. Okay, let's summarize what we've learned here. If you master your music to the levels recommended by the streaming services, minus 11 to minus 14 LUFS and minus one DBTP, your master is probably going to sound pretty quiet in comparison to what the major labels are releasing. 
the major labels aren't paying any attention to the recommended peak and LUFS levels. Instead, they're converting old CD releases right to WAV files for streaming distribution with minus 8 to minus 9 LUFS and minus 0.1 dBTP. And as if this weren't loud enough, EDM releases are being mastered and distributed at club levels, as high as minus 6 LUFS and 0 dBTP. Like wow. Be aware that if you release masters that are this loud, the chances for intersample peaking and potential distortion on some systems, especially consumer systems, increases. However, distortion from too much limiting, over squashing your master, is liable to be a much more audible culprit to the general public across all platforms than intersample peaking will ever be. Also, be aware that if you release CD and club level masters on a streaming service that employs an automatic level normalization algorithm, that your music will be turned down to match their recommended LUFS levels. For example, on an EDM song mastered at minus 6 LUFS, it will be turned down about minus 7 dB when streamed over, say, Spotify or YouTube and nearly minus 9 dB when streamed over Apple Music. If you'd like to see and hear how much your master will be turned down, I highly recommend the Loudness Penalty Meter. It's another really cool free website where you can upload your master to see and hear the results of all the major streaming services. And it's also available as an AAX AU VST plugin. This is another really mission critical mastering meter for your mastering jobs. I'll leave the links below. So clearly, the loudness wars are still happening. The streaming services are trying to control the situation, but they can only really account for the LUFS and peak levels on their specific platforms. Consequently, since you generally only get to upload one mastered audio file for distribution to all your platforms through your distributor, it would be a huge mistake to master at the levels recommended by the streaming platforms. Because if you do, your song is just not going to be competitive in terms of the loudness. So yeah, the loudness wars are definitely still in effect. Ultimately, it's up to you to find the best balance for your music relative to what the streaming services are recommending versus what the major labels are releasing, what LUFS and peak levels will you feel comfortable with given all of these considerations? Will you push the loudness envelope and risk intersample peaks causing distortion on some systems? Or will you back off a touch on the LUFS and DBTP to achieve a potentially more pleasant sounding master across more systems? The choice, like all of the creative decisions you've made for your music, is up to you. Yeah, that is a lot of information, I know. I hope this video helps you to produce the best master possible for your tunes. I'd love to hear your thoughts and experiences on producing your music for release and what tools you're using for mastering. Leave your comments below. And please remember to hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and pick up a music producer t-shirt or a mug to support the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon. Ciao!